Anyway, I stayed there for several more months. I, I already knew Buddhism fairly well, but uh, learning how to behave as a monk, and, and learning Pali in particular, that uh, I spent most of my time doing. And eventually, Venerable Sangharatana said to me what Venerable Panyarama had said to me in Buddha Gaya some time before. He said, look, it's not going to be easy for you to live as a monk or to learn how to be a monk here in India. You should actually go to Sri Lanka. So I decided to take that advice. And uh, I'd, I'd started to think about going to Sri Lanka. And because I was young and <laughs> perhaps naive and perhaps a little bit romantic, I decided I'm going to do it the way that the ancient, the monks of old would have done it. I'm going to walk. So I decided I was going to walk <laughs> from North India all the way to Sri Lanka. Now that's actually a long way. <laughs> anyway, so where we were in Sravasti, not very many pilgrims came because it was rather remote, the road getting there was not a good road. But occasionally, a Japanese bus, a big Japanese air-conditioned bus would come by and Japanese pilgrims would come out. And, and Venerable Sangharatana was gradually building the temple mainly from donations from them. And then very rarely, a bus would come from Sri Lanka, a beaten up old <laughs> Indian bus with Buddhist pilgrims on them. Anyway, um, so I decided, and I had informed Venerable Sangharatana of this, but I hadn't told him that I decided to walk. He'd have probably laughed and called me an idiot. But in the end, I told him, and he tried to talk me out of it. But I said, I'm, I'm going to try to do it at least. Anyway, on the morning that I had decided to set out, a busload of Sri Lankan pilgrims came. And Venerable uh, Sangharatana talked me into at least going to Varanasi in the bus with these Sri Lankan pilgrims, which is in the end what happened. When I got to Varanasi, I went up to Rajgat, walked across the river, and I began my journey uh, south towards, um, towards Sri Lanka. And in the next month or two, I can't really remember how long it took, but I walked hundreds of miles, but occasionally somebody would take me in a cart. Once, I recall, a Muslim man took me about 30, 40 kilometers on the back of his motorcycle. Once I was walking through a small town and a man came up to me and said, are you a Buddhist monk? And I said, yes. And he said he was a Buddhist too. I'd like to give you lunch. So. We went into a scruffy, rather dirty restaurant, and he gave me a very nice meal. And then when I told him I was going walking to Sri Lanka, he was quite astonished. And he took me to the railway station, and he bought me a railway ticket for some... So in the end, I didn't walk all the way, but I certainly walked great distances. And But from time to time, I would end up, through the, the, the kindness of others, getting a train or a bus or the back of a motorcycle, sometimes a bullock cart, once a, a boat, and that's how I ended up getting to Sri Lanka. And during that time, I had no shoes, I didn't wear shoes, um, and I had virtually no money. And I basically went for Pindapata the whole way. And never once did I get nothing. Sometimes I would get just a few coins. Sometimes I would get quite unpalatable food. But almost in every case, people gave me what they could afford. And so it was a, a great lesson in humility for me. I, for the most part, ate what ordinary people ate themselves, which was very, very meager food in very small amounts. Only once or twice did I ever have an unpleasant experience. Um, one that comes to mind is that uh, I was going through a town and I passed a school just as all the boys were coming out of the school. And when they saw me, they gave me a great deal of hassles. They pushed me and 
trying to knock the bowl out of my laughing and, and mocking me and what have you. And it started to get rather um, potentially violent. And fortunately, in the, in the distance, I could hear a, um, a whistle of some policemen coming. And indeed, two policemen came on a you know, rickshaw and, and saved me. I think that was virtually the only time I really had any difficulty. And particularly when I was in South India, in the, in the, in the Tamil country, almost always people understood what Pindapata was. That they assumed, I imagine, that I was a Swami and that I was begging for alms and they all gave, gave me a banana or idli or something. I always had something. It wasn't the best food. And the other remarkable thing was I never got sick. <laughs> Eventually I, I went through Madurai, I went through Mahabalipuram, I went through all these wonderful places. I had the opportunity to see some of the great monuments of, of ancient India, mainly Hindu ones, but some others as well. And eventually I made my way to Ram Ishwaram. And uh, I, I think in those days the bridge to Ram Ishwaram, Ram Ishwaram is a sort of a long finger-shaped island pointing towards Sri Lanka. And on the other side, on the Sri Lankan side, is a point, uh, a finger of land called uh, Talimanna, pointing towards Rameshwaram. And of course, this is where once, I suppose, there must have been a, a land bridge there. And this is where, according to Hindu tradition, Rama and um, Hanuman went across to, jumped across to, this is called uh, Rama's Bridge. But right on the very edge, right on the very end of the island is the Rameshwaram temple, which is a huge ancient temple, a, um, a, a, a goal of pilgrims from all over India. And um, I arrived in the town and I went to the and at that time, I don't know what it's like now, but at that time, the town was made up entirely of single-story houses. There, there wasn't any multi-story buildings or anything. And they were all traditional South Indian houses with this huge temple towering above them. And the whole town smelled of dried fish because other than the pilgrim business, most of the people lived on, on fishing and there were fish drying all over the place, a very pungent smell. And I made my way to the ferry, uh, ferry office, small building, um, and I said I wanted a ticket uh, for the next ferry to Ceylon. Sri Lanka had just changed its name from Sri Lanka, uh, from Ceylon to Sri Lanka, and they said oh, there'll be 25 rupees, something like that, and I said, I, I'm a swami, I, I don't have any money. And the man said, well, no money, no ticket. And I'd never really thought of this <laughs> before. Uh, anyway, I thought, what am I going to do now? Because now I had only about two or three rupees, that's all I had. So I decided to go in and have a look at the temple. And the corridors in this temple are vast. I don't know how big they are, they might be half a kilometre long or something like that. So I walked down this vast, nearly empty corridor and I turned around and as I was walking down, the temple elephant came past me um, with a sort of painted tilak on his head and with a bell jingling on either side of him. And I continued and then I came back up and when I came back up, uh, the mahout the elephant driver was just standing there with the elephant and just nearby was an old tin and people were walking under the elephant. Hindus believe that it is good luck to walk under an elephant and of course if the other elephant doesn't squash you I suppose it is good luck. Anyway, and when they would walk under the elephant they'd just put a few coins in this tin. <laughs> 
and I, I don't know, but I imagine the Mahout is on his coffee break or something, and he's just making a little bit of extra cash for himself by letting people walk under his elephant. So I watch this for a short time, and then the elephant with his trunk picked up the tin and thrust it at me, right into my chest. So I, first I thought, you know, you've looked long enough, you better give a donation too. So I, but I, I didn't want to do that, so I pushed it away and the elephant pushed it at me again. And I looked at the mahout and the mahout sort of went as Indians do, he sort of went, mm -hmm. meaning you can have it if you want. So I asked him and he clarified it, yeah, you take it. So I, I thanked him and I got my robe like this and I tipped it into my robe and held it like that. A few notes and dozens and dozens of coins. And then I went outside the temple and I counted it up and it was almost exactly the right amount for the ticket. Astonished and also delighted. And I went to the um, ticket office and one by one I counted out the coins, put them in little pillars like this, while the same man who had talked to me yesterday watched and there was the right amount and he smiled and said to me, Ganapati has been good to you. <laughs> and consequently the next day I took the old ferry to Sri Lanka and my new life as a Buddhist monk began in the home of Theravada Buddhism.